what's that beautiful tree? This time of year you might see mimosa blooming and be really impressed by its attractive pink flowers. It goes by many names in addition to mimosa, like silk tree or albizia, but despite its real appeal during the summertime when it's blooming, it's not a good choice for your landscape for a number of reasons. Um, it will fall apart fast, but it's also invasive. In today's edition of Pesky Plants, I'm going to talk about mimosa, what it is, and some great native alternatives for your landscape. Mimosa is a small tree and it can grow up to 40 feet tall but frequently is much smaller. It can have a vase-like form with trees wider than they are tall but frequently it's more of a shrubby form with multiple stems. Mimosa has doubly compounded leaves with lots of tiny leaflets. Because of this, mimosa can have a lush, fern-like canopy appearance. In midsummer, typically June, mimosa flowers with outrageous, fragrant flowers, pink pom-poms covering the tree. It looks like a tree that stepped out of a Dr. Seuss book. Mimosa is in the pea family, and as its fruits start to develop from those flowers, you'll notice that in that they're kind of pea-like shaped seed pods. When it's flowering, mimosa is pretty distinctive, but those compound leaves could be confused at other times of year for other trees and maybe smaller plants that have those compound leaves, things like locusts. Mimosa is native to Asia and it was actually introduced to North America as far back as the 1700s as an ornamental plant. Mimosa will thrive anywhere where it has lots of light, so a wide range of different habitats and conditions. It really likes edge habitat as well as disturbed areas, so you'll see it most frequently along roadsides and in old fields, but it can also invade in those wetter areas like stream sides. Mimosa is cold hardy up to zone 6, um, so it's unlikely to really move into colder areas because of that. As beautiful as it is, mimosa is not a great choice for your landscape. It's invasive. It will take over areas faster than our native species can. All of those seed pods produce seed that will rapidly colonize. In addition to that, though, it's just not a great choice for a number of reasons. It falls apart fast and is not a long-lived tree. In addition, it's pretty messy with those flowers and then seed pods going everywhere. And it has pretty invasive roots that are shallow and can come into conflict with houses and other structures. As with any invasive plant, managing mimosa is going to require persistence and patience. The first thing I'd recommend is scouting and being on the lookout for mimosa, especially if you have populations in your area. Think of things that might give it a great opportunity to take hold, disturbances, whether that's um, a new road going in, a harvest, or even an ice storm. If you have other mimosa in your area, it's likely that seed's going to come in during that time and seedlings will get started. Young seedlings can be pulled up with relative ease, especially if the ground is moist, but you really need to make sure to get all of that root system because if any roots are left, it can shoot right back up from there. For those larger trees, you could look at a basil bark application of an herbicide or a cut stump approach um, where you cut the tree down and then paint its stump with herbicide to prevent that root system from sprouting back up. If you have smaller trees, you could also use a foliar spray herbicide, but you want to be careful not to spray any of the other vegetation around, those native species that you want to keep. With mimosa, like other invasive plants, it's also important that you exhaust the seed bank. So all of the seeds that that mimosa plant was producing are going to be there in the ground, and they're going to continue sprouting up for five or more years down the road. So you want to continue monitoring, pulling up those small seedlings, and not letting them get established. Otherwise, they'll be a lot harder to control. You can still find mimosa sold in stores, but it's a nuisance that takes over and is not a good selection for your landscape. If you're looking for a great smaller tree with beautiful flowers, um, there are lots of native alternatives out there. I really recommend you look at redbud, at many of our flowering dogwood, at yellow woods, at white fringe tree, and others that will give you everything you want in terms of that beautiful flower, but something that's gonna be a little bit better in your landscape setting. 
Thanks for joining me today and learning a little bit more about mimosa. If you want to learn more about this and other invasive plants, make sure to check us out online and follow us on social media. Keep up the good fight against those invasive plants and promoting the health of your woodlands.